Hey guys, Too Legit City here. Today we're going to be talking about some mechanics in the game of Oxygen Not Included. Today we're going to be going over some of the rocketry basics. Of course, to get started, you're going to need a lot of tech research depending on where you are in your playthrough. Of course, it requires the bare minimum, the rocket platform. After you have the rocket platform built, you're going to be able to start building your own rockets. If you guys do research a lot of the techs for engines and modules, you guys might be wondering, how come it doesn't show up in my rocketry tab? And that's because it's only going to show up on your rocket platform. When you click on building a new rocket, all your engines are going to be here along with all the modules that you'll be able to choose from always have to choose with an engine at the bottom and then at the very end of your build you have to have a nose cone everything else in between is going to be up to you except for the requirement of having a space pharaoh module depending on whether or not you use the large or small version it is going to be required along with the engine and the nose cone how long are my rockets going to be the rockets length or in our case height is going to be dependent on your rocket engine each rocket has things such as rocket speed height and range these three things are going to be determined by the type of engine you have however the rocket speed is going to be dependent on the amount of burden you have each engine has a fixed amount of engine power, but the burden is going to be a combination of each one of the modules as each module adds a little bit of burden to the engine. So the lighter the burden, the faster the speed. As you could see here, my rocket speed is at 2.6 tiles with the rocket engine at 23 power with only 9 burden. However, on this one, although it's a little bit taller, the amount of rocket burden is actually double at 18, which means that our rocket speed drops from a 2.6 to a 1.3. So depending on what you want your rocket to do, if speed is important, you're going to want to minimize the burden and may actually not to want to utilize all of the heights, as the more height you add, it tends to add more burden as well. With that in mind, choosing your rocket is usually going to be dependent on the resource you have available to use as rocket fuel. As you will need to refill the rockets every time if you guys are coming from the vanilla game rocket fueling used to be a extreme calculation that required a lot of balance where each additional kilogram of fuel adds either a good or bad to the entire rocket due to the few and critical mass point of it however in the space out dlc they simplified that all we have to do now is just cap off the rocket there's no longer any such thing as fuel burden. We're only worried about module burden. The uh, first rocket that we have over here is going to be the rocket that I typically like to use for data analysis. That's going to be when we go inside the rocket. We're going to have a orbital data collection lab. This is going to be how we create data banks, which means we need plastic. And as such, we need to have a starter setup. I typically set up with this with a bathroom or with a data lab and of course the plastic. On the modules I add a solar panel as this can generate up to 60 watts and a battery module. I picked those two specifically because the battery inside the rocket is going to actually cause heat. Because of that I don't want anything that does generate heat outside of the orbital data collection lab inside the rocket. This makes it so that you don't have to empty out all the gases and put in cold oxygen in order for your duplicate to survive the space trip. The starter rocket I use for data lab collection is going to be this rocket. We have a wall toilet connected with some water. Outside of that, it's very bare minimum. And if you guys haven't noticed, we actually also have two plastic tiles right here. That's because when you're in space, there is a lot of radiation. So because of that, I highly advise putting a layer of plastic. If you guys don't have plastic lead, if not lead, just something with a good radiation blocking factor. That way you don't have to worry about your astronauts getting radiation sickness. Once you have the models that you're choosing, you could see why we chose the battery and the solar panel module. You'll be able to start lifting off and of course exploring space. Before we get into that though, let's talk about the large module. The large module inside, as you could see, we have a layer of plastic up top. But one of the major things about this module is that since this is the large module and the biggest module that we have available, we're going to have to utilize this space depending on what you're going to want your rocket to be utilized for. 
a lot of the times if you have space missions you're going to want to have telescopes in orbit data labs for a little bit of research and to expand your vision of your star map it is a popular strat to put a telescope on your rocket move out the half amount of space because you want to be able to make a round trip back to your home planet and start scanning three tiles out from there that will effectively expand how much vision you have on your star map and it's going to be great if you can't colonize other asteroids yet if you don't have the materials know-how whatever it may be that's stopping you from getting to another asteroid using that technique it's going to be very strong especially in the early game now of course the thing about the inside of the space for a module is because you're going to be in space for a good amount of time and because of that you're going to try to want to utilize room bonuses in a setup like this we're just utilizing the three morale from a meal hall and of course we are using a space food in our case it's berry sludge as this is going to be food that never spoils this is perfect as we do not need to cool have this in a good environment and another thing I would also want to have is canister emptiers. This is going to be the method that I use to empty out oxygen inside of the rockets with the uh, propane tanks of oxygen right here. It looks like a propane tank. I know it's not. But this gas canister has a lot of oxygen. By clicking breathable and checking oxygen, it will slowly release it. By unchecking it, they will drop the tank right there. And typically, if you guys don't have the plumbing skill, if you guys do have Atmo suits, once an Atmo suit finishes its durability, it becomes worn out and any remainder oxygen inside the suit becomes a canister like this. Because of that, you will typically have large amounts of oxygen canisters right at your checkpoints. So you will, you will be able to utilize the oxygen from here. So you just keep it there. Save it for your rockets. That's usually what I do with the extra oxygen anyways. So depending on your rockets, what depending on what you want to do with it, you could have a lot of things fitted in. We have three separate room bonuses, a barracks, a washroom, and a mess hall for a nice five morale. Because your duplicates are going to be in space, they're going to miss on a lot of the positive morale benefits such as food options, recreation options such as recreational buildings if you have those set up, seeing friends for a mood buff, overall that core being a lot higher you're going to be missing out on a lot so because of that if they have a lot of skills for the uh morale needed that's going to mean that it's going to be harder to maintain that usually means that you want to maintain your duplicates morale requirement to be low the lower the morale requirement the easier it's going to be to manage the duplicates while they're in space because of that, you may opt for more room bonuses or less, depending on what you need done. And of course, this is actually going to become a mini game of sorts where we try to piece together a puzzle to create an environment that works for us for whatever it is. Sometimes you need to stay at an asteroid for an extended period of time to extract resources, to establish a base. And because of that, you might need things such as an Atmo suit dock to refill the oxygen in the suits. And it's really going to be up to you. Now, there's a plethora of modules for you to use. We're not going to go over each and every single one. However, we are going to be going into navigation. So to get it started, we're going to lift off this rocket and we'll show you how to do so. Once you do a personal checklist, not the one in game, you need to make sure that your duplicates have oxygen in the rockets, so that they don't suffocate in space. Everything you need required, such as water for the bathrooms, if you want to bring food for you because it's going to be a long trip. However, if you're going to be doing a data lab collection, you could lift off for about 20 hours in the cycle and land immediately so that you don't have to bring food with you. But depending on what you're doing in the rocket, of course, that's going to be up to you. Make sure you always have everything you need, though just in case because I have sent missions where the duplicates are in a rocket and I forget that I did not empty out oxygen into the room and they were living off of the Atmos suit oxygen that they had while they stepped in. Of course, we do have a last resort button in space and it has saved me a couple times. But before we get into that, let's start the lift off. Usually after you, your personal checklist is done, you're gonna wanna select a crew member. You're gonna need a pilot, of course, which is gonna be a skill required job. Click on crew. And after you're done with that, it's gonna be waiting for a destination. That's gonna be on the second row right here. 
change and we're going to go into the star map while you're here your cursor actually tells you how far you can fly that trip distance two out of six means that i could travel six tiles total however this is a two tile journey from this tile to that tile that means that if i want to do a round trip i could go out three tiles at most and by doing that i could go out scan or do whatever i need to do such as grab an artifact if that's what i want to do from here and then come back that's going to be a round trip so half of the trip distance will show you that but for our example today we're just going to lift off right outside to the outside of the purple ring once the uh, duplicates inside and he is we could begin launch and once that happens we get the launch sequence now of course you guys might be noticing while the rockets launch there's a little bit of heat coming from the bottom of the launch pad i actually recommend 10 tiles of space vacuum as you could see space exposure so that the heat does not bother you as 10 tiles should cover most if not all engines i am a little bit iffy on the hydrogen engine but at least for the rad bolt that's going to be more than enough to stop the exhaust from heating up things unnecessarily now once in space you're gonna see that once you get to the uh, location you could still move we could change the location we went out one tile from the planet so i still have five tiles meaning i could go out one two and then make a trip back to this space if i wanted to so once you're out here you could actually click on view interior to see the inside and cthulhu over here is making data labs of course this is gonna be something there will do and if you guys didn't know there is piloting skill the rocket control station is going to be piloted by your pilot and depending on their piloting skill they're going to increase the rocket's driving speed they will time to time go on downtime because of their schedule or if they're doing something like catching their breath they will not be driving and in those moments they will actually turn on something called autopilot autopilot is the slowest drive speed that your rocket can take and that happens when your duplicant is not driving of course when that happens that means their piloting skill right here it's not added on which means the trip takes longer now back into the star map one of the things you're going to be able to do while out here is move so clicking on change move to a tile it will tell you how long it will take to fly there and of course, while it's moving, until you actually cross the tile, you actually still keep the five tile range. Meaning that I could actually change my mind and go a different direction and still keep the five tiles. As long as I do the change or canceling of the change before the rocket actually moves. So that's going to be so that you could, you know, if you make a bad decision, pause, you could change the direction. Now, another thing is the moment you're in the purple ring right here, you could actually land immediately into the planets, meaning that if you're right outside of the planet, you could immediately go in as long as you're touching the purple ring right outside of the asteroid. One last thing you guys may see is the emergency procedures button down here. This is abandoned ship. This is something that happens when, let's say that you did not pay attention to the amount of range you could actually move, and we went out a little bit too far. You actually have something called abandoned ship in that case, because when your rocket has no fuel, it will not move. And even if you try to bring a rocket next to it, there's no way to siphon fuel, and there's no way to actually take duplicates out and transfer them to a neighboring tile that has a rocket on it. Because of that, the only option you have is abandoned ship. And we'll show you what happens when this happens. So we'll click abandon and with the click confirm. You'll see that you'll have a escape pod where the duplicates will come out of and some rocket debris. When you hit the abandoned ship button, some of the rocket parts from the rocket and the inside of your space fear module becomes salvaged and actually launches with you. You don't get all of the materials back, but it's better than nothing as that cuts the losses. Now, once you get that, you'll have to unpack and your duplicates will immediately jump out of the escape pod 
and they will always go to the closest asteroid of where they are. Meaning that if they are on this tile, they will go to Friesalin instead of going back to our starter asteroid. So it's going to be based off of distance. They will always land at the closest asteroid. Now, another thing you guys may notice is that I am not using gantries. If you guys are familiar with the vanilla game, the gantries were the only way as the extendable platform was very convenient for servicing the rockets. However, because ladders are all you really need to get into the rocket as long as you use a material that can withstand a little bit of the temperatures like igneous it's not actually required and you can get away with just using ladders just understand that if you do use a low melting point material the rocket exhaust depending on the rocket engine you have may or may not melt it and if you guys do run into an issue where it says you need to check modules on the status bar just make sure you guys have ladders close enough to some of the modules as some of the modules like the liquid cargo tank or the rover modules need to be reached and supplied with material so you will need a ladder here in order to supply it one last thing to go over is going to be the grounded command on your rocket control station by clicking on grounded this actually restricts the access of a lot of the buildings and is very crucial to stop your duplicates from using the bathroom inside the rocket because of some of the buildings have to be assigned such as some of the beds uh, there is public access for the toilet some of the mess tables if your duplicates go on the rocket mission come back and your rocket control station is not grounded they will continue to eat on those said mess tables and sleep in those said beds which is usually going to be a less optimal environment compared to your base because of that it's recommended to keep your rocket control station on grounded as when it's grounded it will allow your duplicates to build do all the jobs except it will not allow them to use the buildings however if you keep it on grounded while you do the liftoff the grounded becomes removed because you're going to be in space however you can re-enable grounded while in space and that can reduce your duplicates from being able to work to not being able to work i do believe that's a glitch another thing is if you do land on another asteroid onto a rocket platform you're going to be grounded again so if you are looking to colonize a planet make sure to check this button so your duplicates can do anything they need to do such as use the restroom and of course do any of the jobs inside but guys that has been rocketry basics in the game of oxygen not included if you guys have any questions about this leave a comment down below hope you guys enjoyed today's video and of course guys don't forget to like and subscribe thank you guys